Okay. All right, amen. Brother Charlie said Gibeon's a good welcome, so welcome. Big old wireless hug. Sorry about that. Amen. Is anybody not glad to be in God's house this morning? Everybody smiling. I know you're smiling, even though you got a mask on. All right, let's let's worship our Lord this morning. Let's get ourselves ready for hearing some preaching. And we want what we're greeting everybody, preacher. We're just gonna sing. Give out wireless hugs. Let's stand up and do. That's what's in my heart of melody.
we are right now. Thank you for this church. When you look at others with their lands and gold, and that price of promise you is well done for. Not for many blessings, but it cannot buy. Your reward in heaven for your own all night. Have your blessings named it one by one. Have your blessings see what God
Thank you, Cheryl, for that song. Uh, we've got something really new for you right now. Mike New, N E W. Okay. <laughs> so we got something new for us. We're going to let Mike sing for us this morning. I talked to Mike last Sunday, and uh, he uh, he told us about his background and uh, his music that he, he's been been doing in the church that he came from. Mike's new to the area, good friends of Vernon and Jerry's, and uh, we thank them for inviting them to him, them, his family to come. and. So we're gonna let Mike sing for us now. So y'all pray for him as he sings. We, I look forward to hearing him sing. Come on, Mike. Well, this is uh, this is gonna be kind of difficult without a strap, I guess, but we'll make it work. Um, <laughs> look at there, bunch of helpful people around here. I certainly appreciate uh, while he's doing that. I appreciate all the hospitality that uh, myself and my family have been shown in this church. Um, Moving to the area, the hardest decision of it was, you know, leaving our church. Um, my wife and I started attending a church down there about 16 months ago, and um, it had become like a 75-person family. And we walked in here last Sunday not really knowing what to expect um, after Sister Jerry had talked to my wife. And uh, I just want to say thank you for the, the open arms and the warm welcome that we received. It made us feel right at home, um, and we really do appreciate it. We can figure it out, I'm sure. If a guitar strap is what stops this service, then maybe we need to try something else anyway. <laughs> so Sister Jerry heard me sing this song last week in the Shelby Music Center in being an eight. It's called I Can't Even Walk. I thought number one would surely be me. I thought I could be what I wanted to be. I thought I could feel on life's seeking sands. But Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Oh Lord, I can't. I've been doing 
doing some fishing here lately. Y'all know that, I guess. Me and my grandsons. And when you catch one big enough, you say, that's a keeper.
She had chest pain, shortness of breath, they stopped at the medic station in Pumpville. They sent her to the hospital and told me, y'all know this. She ended up in Charlotte, they thought she had a heart attack. They went in with the catheterization, no blocked arteries, couldn't find anything. It ended up just a minor thing they treat with medicine and she's fine. She's in church today. That's a blessing. Praise God. I told her, you can't keep a good woman down. I said, and changed. I said, you can't keep a good God down. Amen. You know, she broke her hip. She's been through some things in the last two or three years, and she just springs back up. <laughs> can't keep a good God down. Well, can I go on? Is it not good to talk about how God blesses us? Yes. This morning I came to church. Some of y'all remember Ricky Upton, Rick Upton, young man that lives in West Palm Beach, Florida, and has a tiny home over here on the mountain, and he and his son visit our church when they're here. Well, he's here. I saw on Facebook this morning, I was sitting up, I had to set up Facebook there, and I saw where he was in North Carolina, so I was thinking, well, Rick will probably visit church today with us. We'll get to see him. I, came, I went home, I came down here, I went home, took a shower, come back. I had an open door. It says, Jimmy, I have to work today, asking for prayers for my wife and three sons. Well, then, Christ Rick, and a check, a nice check for this little church. That's what this church means to him. That's what God does. This man lives in Florida. He supports our church. Uh, He's been on our Facebook thing so He asked me get, when the first time he's here to get online and get a website or something because he enjoys this little country church. And uh, those things are blessing. Went to the mailbox yesterday, got the mail, has a check for $500. South Mountain Bluegrass Church. That's the God I serve. That's the way God blesses. And we count that as a blessing. Charlie's thing. That song, count your blessings one by one, you'll never run out of them. Amen. My dear wife sitting there, she's helped me a lot. God put her in my life because he knew what I was going to be, and he knew I needed a whole lot of help. He is my helper, but he sent others. I called her an angel. I told her one day, if God had anybody better than her, he kept them for himself. That's what I think of my wife. I love her like Christ loved the church. That's what the Bible tells me to do. But uh, I used to get real down and out and discouraged and depressed and she would just be the one. She knew the thing. She said, this is just a season. It'll pass. You know, it'll be over. There's nothing. But, and then when, I don't know all the right words. When I counsel y'all, I pray and ask, she's shaking her head. I pray and ask God to give me the words to share with you when I come to help you. And God speaks through me. And that's how he works, and that's how I do. But I tell her sometimes when she get down, she just count your blessings. Look around you. Look at others. You know, it could be us with the mask on, radiation, and, and your hers, her hers coming back. My own, but it could be us. And she's told me just to hush. I haven't heard that before. You know, because you can always look at others when you're down and out. But I don't know the right words to say to her to encourage her sometimes, and that's all I, what I do, what God taught me to do is what I'm saying. I can get down and out, and I just start counting my blessings. I just start counting one by one. Like you said, Brother Charlie, I got a house to live in. I got a roof over my head. I got shoes on my feet. I got food on my table. I got a great church that we all love one another that I'm in. I got a good family. I got all my friends. And when you start doing all that stuff, it kind of takes all that other stuff away from you. We think about um, Beth coming in here and getting saved and getting cancer and her mother died or dad died. I mean, just if you want to put all that in the bundle, anybody in here would have an excuse to be down and out, depressed, discouraged. Beth just counted it a blessing. Her dad went to heaven. Her mother went to heaven. Her mother got to know she got saved before she went to that end to the lesson. She got cancer. She had no fear. She just counted it. I've never met anybody that said they were happy because they had cancer with our dear Beth. Right. I've told her if I ever get bad sick or cancer, she's my coach. <laughs> She'll be the one. I won't need the preacher. I'll need her because she just walked through this so bravely. And 
that we can all look back and count that as a blessing to us, her testimony to us as her friend and sister and brother in Christ in this church, how she's been a blessing to us, not only to the doctors and Terry and her family. There's a lot of blessings. Our God's still blessing. He's still saving. He's still in charge. In the way of prayer request, remember Sister Beth still going through radiation. I remember Eric and Adam. I didn't know Eric come home, but continue to pray for Eric Wilkinson and his son Adam. Uh, pray for Miss Jean. I spoke to her last night. She was wanting to come to church this morning. I guess she's not feeling well enough. Pray for her. She's having kind of having up and down days right now. If you've been talking to her, pray for uh, Jane and Sue. I got Jerry Berry on here. We can just keep praying for her. And she's here doing well. Pray for her recovery. And uh, my brother-in-law, Don, remember Don Cole and Cheryl Don. I hadn't talked to him at all this week, but he was doing great last weekend, and I'm sure he still lives with her. Uh, Timothy Black, Tim Black, that's Cheryl's son. Kenny, uh, uh, Denise's brother, Kenny Harris, pray for him. He was sick yesterday. I hadn't talked to him today or last night. Don't know all the details, but he's going through some things again. Remember him. And Eileen Hogan, that is my son-in-law's mother, my daughter's mother-in-law, and she just got diagnosed this week with cancer, and it's not good. She has lung and brain cancer, and she'll be starting chemo Monday to start treatment or meet with the doctor Monday to start chemo and radiation. Pray for her and, uh, of course, our Carly and Robert, our son-in-law and daughter, and, and her other children and our grandchildren, which Eileen, the grandmother, lives in the home with our poor little grandson. So they're going to be going through this. So pray for them and uh, the family. And me and Denise will be trying to minister and help in that situation. Kathy Knapp, have you heard anything from Kathy anymore? And, uh, she's been sleeping. Okay, Kathy Knapp has, is in probably final stages unless God intervenes with her cancer. Miss Mary, uh, Terry's mother, Mary saying she's back at Shelby Manor. And, she needs uh, prayer this morning. She needs prayer this morning. Pray, pray for her. She, she had not got some medicine for what I understand. They're waiting on the doctor to get stuff done and she's having to go without medicine so we need to pray for Mary and Pray for Terry uh, as he goes through that with the doctor in the uh, Shelby Manor trying to get it. Y'all know how it is when you're trying to get a prescription on the weekend and to change doctors and just pray for that situation. And Miss Lee, how's Miss? Uh, Lee's doing well. Okay. Just doing much better than we were afraid that she would. Good. Missing, Kelly's missing, pray for her family as you go through that. Couldn't imagine having someone in your family missing. Pray for them and for Miss Donna's. Yes. And uh, continue to pray for Lib. You know, she had two broken hips. Uh, she's having to work twice as hard as uh, Miss Mary. Brenda Blackman, which is Beth's sister in law, battling cancer. Larry Grimes, he's not here today. He's got an upcoming surgery when he goes back. Anybody else have a special request to be on our prayer today? Brother Charlie. Brother Jim, if anybody heard from Kathy Neely, I know she hasn't been here in a while. We've tried to call her and not been able to get her. She, I'll, I'll try to, I've been by there and, and uh, met Luther. She's staying, the lady down the road that fell and broke her hip, she's sitting with, they don't have anybody, she's sitting with her right now trying to help. But I'll, I'll check her. As far as I know, everything's good. She's just busy. Russell? Let's put Joe and Sybil Blanton on our prayer list. Lord knows why. Okay. 
Anybody else? <coughs> My pastor from South Carolina, his his daughter, uh, Kimberly, um, she's diagnosed with TOTF, and it's it's really beating her around pretty bad right now until they get it under control. Okay. Pray for her. She's almost 12. Uh, okay, I pray for her, Kimberly. God knows that's in South Carolina. God knows where it's at, and he knows that situation, the pastor's daughter. Pray for, um, how's your back, Charlie? How's your back going? Pray for Brother Charlie. He got a back issue. I'm going to speak to you after church about that, too, by the way. I don't ask about it. <laughs> well, Dr. Jimmy's coming on. No, uh, <laughs> this is a spiritual thing going here, this is. Anyway. Pray for our nation. You know, we got the coronavirus going on. We got corrupt politicians, corrupt government, all these things going on. Now we got rioting over uh, uh, somebody being killed by this officer. We had somebody killed in Georgia. I think we got a retired police officer in here. These officers that's, that's not doing their job or abusing their power, they need to be held accountable. They need to be charged. If they're in the wrong, it needs to be done through the justice system. And what's going on now has nothing to do with demonstrations of that. It's just terrorism. I told the nation this morning, these people are doing all this stuff, need to be arrested and charged with terrorism, and set down to go to the boat bank just like the rest of the country. That's all it is. And you know, they, what they want you to do, the nation made a good point. They want to take one of these police officers and make an example out of them because they did do something. They did. They need to take some of these thugs that's rioting in our country and make an example out of them and put them away for about 25 years for coming into towns and disrupting order and turning them out. I'm not going there, but I, 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 I'm not going to miss the preaching to go there. Pray for our nation. Pray for all this stuff that's going on. God's in control. Pray for the victims of the virus and the families. Our health care workers first for the plate. Pray for our police, our National Guard, and our military. There, it's at the point I was reading on the news last night. They're at the brink of calling up some of our uh, full-time military and putting some of these cities to restore order. And that's what you see in the third world countries when civil war is about to break out, folks. So we, we really need to be serious about praying for our nation and our leaders. Pray for our president. Pray for our enemies. Pray for those that persecute you and don't like you. And usually the Bible tells us. Pray for a revival. I pretty much mentioned that. Pray for revival in America. Pray for revival. Pray for Bob Berry. Pray for the Bob Gardner children. Who we've been praying for for a couple of years for salvation. Pray for all those that's lost. Y'all have got friends and family. Pray for the future of our country. And pray for the future generations. I mentioned last week in my sermon about how God told them to make a memorial for the future, for their children and the other children. When they come, they can ask what this mean, and they explain it's what God done. We need to be teaching and reaching our future generation. What's going on now is going to get worse. What's going on, according to the scripture, is going to get worse. Our children are going to need Jesus. Yes. We're the ones. We've got to tell them about Jesus. We've got to try to prepare them and help them because it's going to get worse. Our generation is going through worse times than the generation before us. The generations after us are going to go through much worse according to Scripture unless God calls us home. Pray for our future generations, our children, our grandchildren. Pray for one another. Unspoken request. Is Hold on a minute, preacher. Yes, sir. I'm preacher. Just trying to get this in. I thank the Lord that we've had Sarah home with us for several weeks. It's really been nice. And she's getting ready to start looking for work. But they called her this week. And this is a praise report. And they called her this week from her job down in New Hanover County. So they got work for her. And, but she's got to leave us today. And we pray that she's safe. Lord, keep his hand on her, keep her safe in her journeys, and when she gets down to there, to the bigger city. Okay, pray for, pray for Sarah as she goes back, Jerry's daughter, and pray that her job will work out, and pray for Nancy and Jerry. 
Because when they come and stamp, while it's hard to, hard to say bye when they drop off, being told, I know it is. Pray for them as they go through this transition. Anything else before we pray? Pray for Mike and Megan and their family as they transition from the other church and moving into the area. That's, he was telling me earlier about all the things that's already happened trying to get moved, and we know sometimes that can be a struggle. Pray, pray for them that, that things will get better and God will work that out. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you in the name of Jesus today. I call myself, Lord, before I come before your throne. And I just, Lord, you know every need. You know everything that we put on this paper that was mentioned and written down. And you know every unspoken request. Every hand that went up in here, you know what it was all about. And Father, we just pray your will for each and every one. Whether it's a spiritual need or a physical need, whatever the need may be. We pray your will be done in each one of those things that was on each life. We pray for those that are sick, those that have cancer, those that are facing surgery, those that lost loved ones, Lord, those that are struggling, those that are protecting us, whatever the need is, we pray for them. And we pray especially tonight for a hedge or today for a hedge of protection around our law enforcement, our military, our, our National Guard, all those involved in protecting our our country and pray for our president and our leaders as they make tough decisions and what to do. And Father, we pray for all those families. We pray for the family that lost a loved one and the police officer, that family, all those that's involved, God, we lift them up to you today. And Father, we do what's hard for us sometimes. We pray for our enemies today. We those that's against us, those that turn against us, those that don't know you, don't love you, those that are against you, we pray for them today. And we pray for them to come and know you as their Lord and Savior. Father, we pray for a great revival in America. We pray for our children, our grandchildren, those that will come after us. Lord, that you would help us to be the church you want us to be, to proclaim the gospel and prepare the way for those coming behind us, Lord, that they would uh, get back to you. Lord, America needs to turn back to you. We pray that we can be in this little church here, and each one here can be a part of that just by sharing the gospel and telling others about you. Pray for those on here for salvation. We ask for Holy Ghost conviction upon their hearts. And Father, we thank you today. We pray for those that's not here for whatever reason. Uh, we bless them and pray especially for Miss Jane and Sue. And Lord, we just ask everything that we do here today, God, to bring honor and glory to you. We thank you that we're back in your house, even though we worship you in our own house, in the car, wherever we are, we can always worship you. But we're glad to be back with our brothers and sisters in your little church. Father, we thank you for that. We praise you. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. 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 Oh, in a way, the offering, the, the bucket's over by the door. If you have an offering, won't you put your tithes and offers in? Just as you go out, just drop. We're not going to pass it. So just drop it in as you go out over there. Thank you. Let's, uh, we don't have, you don't have any, but let's, uh, let's stand up and praise the Lord as we sing now, right now. We'll do a couple of verses. Oh, Lord, my God.
just prayed and asked God to help me make this speedily. And I'm going to preach this message. It's cool in here today, so y'all can it out. Man, man left. Miss Lisa paid me a compliment this week when I was talking to her. She was uh, witnessing to Adam, her nephew, trying to get him to come to the church. And she was telling me how I was a lot different than a lot of preachers. And I guess I am. I just, like I've always said, I'm just the real deal. I'm Jimmy, and God called me to preach. I'm no better than nobody. I don't put myself on the pedestal. I'm just as happy mumping in here as I am standing behind the pulpit, to be honest with you. And uh, she said she was telling Adam all that, and he called and talked, and he called me again. I told her she'd call me in time. And he don't understand because he was in the First Baptist Church, and they dress different, and they do different, and that's why he got out of church. He, he assured me he'd been born again. And it's a shame that the people ran him out of the church. Amen. And I told him, I, 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 I agree with a lot of that. A lot of churches run people away from Jesus by their traditions and things. But she, she said she was telling Adam, said, you won't believe it. Her preacher said he jumps and cuts up and lies and does everything we do. But when he gets in that pulpit, it's a different thing. And I said, I was just thinking, that's when the rubber meets the road. When I get up here, this is God's time. This is God's word. And I count it the privilege and the honor. And I do it with all reference, uh, reverence to be obedient to God. But uh, I thought that was kind of funny how she was telling him how I joked and cut up. I remember she pulled my beard. Y'all remember? She couldn't sleep that night. She called the next day, walked down when she was sorry. I said, for what? She said, I pulled your beard last night. She was in her house. I said, so? She said, you're a preacher. I said, I'm your brother. Pull my beard any time you want to. But anyway, some preachers are not like that. And it, sometimes it hurts. I'm not saying I'm better than any of them. I'm just the real deal. But anyway, you may have heard me say how simple it is to become a Christian. And it is simple. I've had people tell me they like my preaching because I'm simple. I keep it simple. I'm not educated. I can't make it hard. Because I'm just, I classify myself dumb as a box of rocks. So there you go. But God made it simple for us. It wasn't simple for Him. It wasn't simple for Christ and what He had to do for us. But it's simple for us. All we have to do is believe in our heart and ask Jesus to save us. But how confusing is that to the world? They just think you can't do that. You just can't believe and be saved. You can't be changed. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, if we confess with the mouth, believe in our heart that the Lord raised him on the third. He's talking about the resurrection. He's talking to the Jews. He raised him on the third day. If we believe that, acknowledge that, confess it, he's faithful to save us. We believe. I believe that. It says with the heart. You all know I preach about from head to heart a lot. With the heart. A man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. We confess. We can't do it. Can't even walk. These songs on some just go right. Can't even walk without you holding my hand. Nothing we can do on our own to be saved. We have to believe, have faith, and believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And that's simple. We say it's simple. The hard part is, is to humble yourself. Verse 10, verse, you go, you believe in the righteous with your heart. You confess with your mouth. You know it's hard for somebody to come up. We, we took the grandchildren to the mountains yesterday and we hiked up the trail. It was hard on me. I've got COPD. I have breathing issues. The higher I get, the more uh, strain I get. My breathing come, becomes more, but I made it. I went and done that. And if I couldn't do it, I have to humble myself and tell Denise and the grandkids, y'all go, Papa can't do this. I can't do it unless I had a lift chair or one of those power scooters to ride up with you. You know, and it's hard when you have to say, I can't do this. Especially for men, men more than women, I believe. We can do anything. We can fix cars. We can fix the garden. We, when the wife calls, he's going to do this, do that, whatever. 
We can do all that stuff, most of us. We're used to looking out for We got this thing built in, so I don't need nobody. I can do it. Uh -huh. And we have to come to the point for salvation, for the saving grace of God, to say, I can't do this without you. Amen. There's no other way mm -hmm. except the blood of Jesus. And that's the hard part. It's simple, but the hard part, I used to go, uh, you mentioned Joe and Sybil. Joe Blanton was a deacon in our church for years. When I first got saved, we had soul winning. We went out every Thursday and witnessed and invited people to church and tried to win people to Jesus and or lead them to Jesus. You don't win them, you lead them. And uh, he taught me the first time I went out, he said, it's not hard to lead somebody to Jesus. The hard part's getting to realize they're lost and they need him. And that's the truth. You got to humble yourself before the Almighty God and say, I need you. I can't do it on my own. That's why he sent his son. You know, I make mistakes and, and say or do things that's not Christ like. Yep, you preacher. I'm a sinner. I do it too. Mm -hmm. A lot of them don't think they do. Billy Graham said he was. Paul said he was the chief of them. Mm -hmm. We fell too. I'm the real deal. And I've had people do that, say, curse words or do something or, or come to me, confessing to me they've done something wrong. I say, you need to ask God to forgive you. If you've been born again, he already has, but he wants you to ask him. He wants you to acknowledge it. But I said, if you could do it on your own, he wouldn't have to on the cross. Amen. That's the thing. That's right, amen. If we could do it without him, he wouldn't have to die. But it's hard for us to acknowledge it. He had to die so we could do it. You have to humble yourself come to Jesus. Lay down your own life. The Bible talks about dying to self. Take up the cross and follow me. Die to self. You do all that to come to him. In verse 11 in there it says, whoever believes on him should not be ashamed. A lot of people get saved and they carry Jesus in the back pocket don't want nobody to know they got him back. They're kind of ashamed of him. They don't want, you know, you got all, and, it, and when you first get saved, it's really like that. I know Thomas is in here. You got a lot of friends you used to go do things with. You don't feel comfortable talking around Jesus about Jesus today because they don't know and they, they'll make fun of you and all that kind of stuff. They get mad and go on. But the, the, farther, the deeper you get and the farther you can follow him, it'll be easier and they'll say, hey, this is real. They, you may be their Bible. They may be reading you, Thomas, see what they do. You just keep growing and you get stronger before you know it. You're not ashamed to tell somebody you're a follower of Jesus. That's right. You're proud of it. You're proud of it. You have to humble yourself. The hardest part of salvation on our part is to humble ourselves, say that we're sinners and we can't do it without Him. You know, we don't have to work to be saved. God done all the work for us. It's simple. We just believe. We have faith. It even, I'm going to hurry, He gives us a measure of faith in the beginning. We've got enough faith to go ahead and believe, and then your faith grows and keeps growing. Our faith grows by seeing God heal Beth from cancer. Our faith grows by hearing this report from Adam and Eric, how God's, the doctors are saying we don't understand this. I understand it. I serve a God that can fix people. Uh, but our faith grows. You have to have faith. Believe in your heart, ask God. It's by His grace that we become saved people. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 10. Ephesians 4, Ephesians 2, 4 through 10. But God, who is rich in mercy for His great love with He loved us, and we all know that He sent His Son and said, God sent His Son to die. And whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Even when we were dead in sin, to quicken us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. Nothing we do but believe. And it raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ. For by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Most everybody in here knows John 3.16. That's probably the most well-known Bible verse. For God so loved the world, he sent his son. He gave him. That's what it was for, to save us. Verse 9, not of works, lest any man boast. 
You know, you can go and say, well, I sing in the choir, or I sing in the group. I carry a King James Bible. Mm -hmm. I wear a white shirt and a black tie. It ain't too hot, I wear my suit coat. For the women, I wear my long dress down to my ankles, and I go to church every Sunday morning, and I'm in Sunday school class. Don't bother me one thing. If your name's not on the, written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you lost, you're going to die and go to hell. You can't work your way to heaven. You can't buy your way, you can't work your way. It's all God's grace and your faith, having faith, trusting God, accepting Him as your Lord and Savior. Not of works, lest any man boast. How many of you ever heard boast about going to church? How much they give in the church? Well, I gave that church $2,000 on the building fund. By the way, we're, we're about $11,000 off having the money to pay for this place. We got to the end of the year to do it. God's going to do it. <laughs> but you hear people, oh, I give, I give five thousand dollars down out of that church. Yeah, I, I bought that place for some clothes. I took them out to eat. Boy, I'm a man of God. They can do all that stuff and die and go to hell. That's right. If they're not born again, you know. I'm going to preach on this work thing right here in a minute. Not of works lest any man but verse 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. That's what I want to speak on. I want you to remember unto which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. God give us a little instruction book, if you will, what we're to do. How we're to come to you know Jesus, how we're to be born again, how we're to become, get into the family of God, and then it has the instructions in here what to do if you are in the family of God. By grace are you saved, not of works, you're saved unto good works, ordained before that we should walk in them. God knew when He saved me. I would have never dreamed this in my wildest dreams that I'd stand in the pulpit and preach. God knew it. When God called me, I was obedient to answer that call. I'm here today doing this work because of what God done for me. Amen. Not to get me to heaven, doing the good works God calls us to do. The work of the Christian comes after salvation. That's when we start working. I want to be worthy of my calling. I want to be worthy of being saved. I want to do for God because he's done for me. Amen. Not to right. get to heaven. Amen. God gives me money. He pays me. I work. I get money. I give my time. I help other people. I buy food, goods, whatever. We do it because, not because we have to, not because it's going to get us in heaven, not for points. There's rewards. The Bible says there'll be rewards for good work, for serving. We're to serve him because we want to serve him. Because what he done for us. <coughs> the work of a Christian comes after salvation. When the work begins is when you totally sell out or you totally surrender to God. He wants to be Lord of your life. Lord of your little world. Not just Lord of your salvation. You know, a lot of people... I don't want to get saved. I can go to heaven. I don't want to go to hell. And a lot of them still walking around lost. That's what they, they've been deceived by the devil who is a great deceiver, a liar, the father. The Bible calls him the father of all of these. He created him evidently. He surrendered completely to Christ. And then they'll have a desire. You'll have a desire to serve, to be a workman for Christ. You'll want to do something. Not to get you to heaven. Not to get him to like it. it. says he loved us when we were yet sinners. He died. We love him because he first loved us. You'll want to work. You'll want to show yourself worthy of your salvation or your calling, whatever. Once we're saved, the Bible says we're a new creature. Y'all know that. The Bible says, Second Corinthians says, Therefore, if any man. And I always like that word, therefore, my preacher used to say, when you see that, always look, because it's there for a reason. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. 
A double L L. All things are become new. See, when Jimmy got saved, the old druggie, the one that was doing all the things he didn't what supposed to do, that didn't know the Lord personally, knew all about him, but he didn't know it, and never met him in his heart. He saved me. I become a new creature. I was a new person. When the devil gets after me, I tell him to go down out of Bethel Church in Shelby where I got saved. Find that old Jimmy. I guess they buried him out in the parking lot because he died that night. I become a new man. Amen. We get a new life. We're raised from the dead, basically. We're spiritually dead. If we're walking around. If you're not born again, you're a dead man walking. Or a dead woman. You don't have the life. You don't have the spirit. Your spirit is dead. <laughs> We're raised from the dead by our salvation. Then we should have a desire. Billy Graham preached a sermon one time. I, I love listening. I still listen to a lot of Billy Graham's preaching. Have you ever counted the cost of being a Christian? Count the cost. I've heard him preach and tell people, count the cost before you come to this altar. Count the cost. He's preached that over. And what it means, when you come up here to get saved, you got to pay for it. You don't pay for salvation. You put the bottle down. You repent and you turn from it. The adulterous life you're living, you stop it. You repent. You turn. You become a new person. All of that stuff is long gone now because you're to live for Christ. And he don't put up with it. He's a holy God. We serve a holy God. We live a holy life through his blood, through his righteousness. That's how we become holy. What it takes to do this is commitment. This is what I, I want to talk about the work. This, this is probably, y'all here, this virus is going on, y'all not afraid to come to church. I never know why God has me to preach some of these messages. I think this is probably the most committed people in the church sitting in here today. But God gives it to me and I'll preach what God gives me. Are you committed? Number one, committed to trust God when you don't understand. It takes a commitment to be the Christian, to do the work. We want to work for God. I don't understand what's going on with this virus, but I wanted to have church even though I didn't understand. We pulled that trailer out here. We set speakers up. We done it on the back. We're gradually getting in here. I want to be in here Thursday night and have hot dogs and the whole thing. But I don't understand what's going on, and I'm not sure about doing that yet. I'm praying God's got us on those things. But I don't understand. I don't understand a lot of things. But I do understand I'm supposed to trust and obey. This, I can ask Miss Beth to go ahead and say it. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all, A-L-L, thine heart. And lean not on thine own understanding. There's, there's more that I don't understand in here. But I still trust him if I don't understand it. Amen. Are you committed to following God's instructions, God's guidance for your life, when you don't even understand what he's, why he's wanting you to do it? You know, you may be riding down the road, and God says, pull in there. God says, we've had people come in here and say, right by God, I won't know why God told us to stop and they come in. I had two ladies a witness to in a camper out here this week. They pulled in. I didn't know what was going on. There was a turtle crossing the road. They went to try to get the turtle. Somebody stopped and got him in a truck. And we stood right there for 30 minutes talking about Jesus when I was moving here from West Virginia. And I told them, Sterling, if we go to West Virginia, here, Billy, they'll be right away from home. <laughs> but uh, we stood there. I, I didn't understand why then people was here talking to me about the Lord, but I know what the Lord called me to do, share Jesus with people. So he stood out there and done it. I just trusted him. And then another one, number two, committed to sacrifice. This is a hard one. Daily. Paul said he died daily to self. Daily. We learn to give up things in this world, things we want to do. Our self-will. See, we're to be controlled by God's will. God's will. You know, Jesus on the way to the cross, he said, not my will, take this cup from me, if it be thy will. Not my will, Father, but yours be done. 
If you're going to be committed and you're going to serve God, it don't matter what you want to do today. It matters to you, but it don't matter being faithful to God. Be faithful in the little things. I'll make the rulers over big time. It don't matter. Maybe you got up this morning. I'm on Russell back there. Russell's a fisherman, got boats. He could have gone up this morning and said, boy, it's a pretty day to go fishing. I'm going to hook the boat up and I'm going to the lake. They got all them other people at the church. They don't need me up there. You know, you just give it up. You sacrifice. Today's God's day. Today's the day I go worship. I can go fishing some other day. I'm going to the Lord's house today to worship with my family, my brothers and my sisters. You sacrifice your desires. It's God's will that we assemble together. The Bible tells us that. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together for exhortation and encouraging. And it says more as we see those last days coming. And sure, we see them coming. So the church houses ought to be full. They ought to be full. Even today, with this virus going on, they ought to be full. It takes sacrifice. Give up the things you like. I'm not saying give it all up. I'm not saying Russell don't never go fishing. But when, say he gets up this morning and he's got his boat hooked up last night, he's going fishing. And I call him and I say, Russell, Brother Terry's really going through some things. I think we ought to go visit him today. Pray for him. Brother says, well, I was planning on going fishing. I guess it's God's will. I'll meet you over an hour. That's giving up your thing, sacrifice, to serve. You don't have to give up going fishing. You don't have to give up drinking. We got some old drunks in here. You know, I didn't have to give up drugs to get saved. I just had to believe. I had to believe. And the moment I believed, he took drugs away. I didn't even have to give them up. He took them. He took the desire out of my heart to ever do them again. Never done them. 30 something years, nearly 40 years. Never done them. Never wanted them again. I didn't have to give it up to get into heaven. He wanted me to give it up so I could be a servant. So he could use me to serve, to work for him. Are you willing to die to self to serve God, to be committed? Number three, committed to serve. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Are your thoughts established by what men see, or are your thoughts established by what God sees and God desires? Do you do? Do I get up here and preach so I look good being a preacher? Mr. Goody Two Shoes, you see the big halo up here? I'm better than everybody else because I'm a preacher. Is that why I'm doing this? Not hardly. It's not easy being a preacher. It's not easy being a pastor. God calls you. God qualifies you. God gives you what you need to do it. Amen. Commit your works unto Him. And then the thoughts will be established. I would be telling the law if I got up there and said, I don't care what y'all think about me. And I've heard a preacher say it over and over. I've heard him say, I don't care if you leave, if you don't like my... I do care. I care about everybody in here. I care what you think about me. I want to be your brother in Christ and your friend and your preacher and your pastor you can depend on and call and I can be there to help you through the power of God when you need me. So I do care. But I don't, I mean, I'm not up here to make y'all, y'all think I'm something that I'm not. I'm Jimmy. God called me to preach. I'm the real deal. God knows the heart. He knows why I'm up here. He knows Charlie's heart when he comes up here and plays music. He knows everybody in here. He knows Mike came up and sung so beautiful one. He knows his heart. He knows he's singing for the Lord or he's singing just to get people to clap for him. And we have that sometimes. People, churches are full of entertainers. They do it for their own applause. There's churches and used to, there's still churches that they, they don't want you to applaud when somebody sings them. They say that's not right. You only give applause to God. Well, we see that different. We applause the person if they're genuine and they're serving God. We applause them that they're giving their talent and their service to God. Amen. And we try to acknowledge that when we do that. Right. But if they're up here being a show out, picking and singing and all that, and not doing it for the Lord, we sometimes we never know. Sometimes God puts it in our heart and gives us for discernment. Mm -hmm. And I try to nip it in the bud, as Bonnie would say. 
But God knows the heart. He knows why you're serving. It says, do all you do to the glory of God. That's what the Bible says. Are your thoughts established by God or by what man thinks of you? One good thing that Charlie's mentioned to me before about our music, people singing and we've had talked about things. When I'm up here, everything I'm pointing you to, I hope and pray, is to God, to Jesus Christ. The songs I sing, the songs we sing in our service, I hope and pray they're pointing you to Jesus Christ. They're about Him. They're to bring attention to the cross and to Jesus Christ, not to Jimmy, not to Charlie, not to Jerry, not to Cheryl, or whoever it is up here. We're not trying to bring attention to us. We're trying to bring attention to that cross and to Jesus Christ. Amen. And God knows your heart. If you're not doing it, He knows you're not serving Him. You're serving self. you got to die to self if you're going to work for the Lord. Commitment, a willingness to give your time and energy to something that you believe in. That's a simple definition. Dedicating yourself to the cause. Are you truly committed today to serve God? Are you truly committed to serve God? To be a follower. The Bible, the Bible talks about dying to self. Take up your cross. He told the disciples, take up your cross and follow me. All, leave the fishing boat tired. Leave you that tired. We don't need none of that. Just come on. I'll make you fishers of men. That's what the Lord told them. Give all that stuff up, whether you want to or not. You know, some things I would really like to do that I don't do no more because of my testimony. I don't go to places, even though I don't drink and all, there's some places I won't go to because it looks bad on this church and it looks bad on me. And I don't do it. I'm not going to be the stumbling block for others behind me right. by doing That's things right. I shouldn't Amen. do. Amen. Are you truly committed to serve God, to follow Him? Do you do it because God called you to do it? Do you do it because it's convenient? Do you do it to make yourself look good? Or do you do it for God? Are you committed to studying God's Word? You know, one of the things, we don't do that just on Sunday morning, Sunday night. We do it every day. Pick it up and read it. One of my sayings is people won't read it because it reads them back. Tells, you, tells us how bad, tells us, all of us, me too, how bad we really are. It's a mirror. Are you committed to studying God's Word? Are you committed to prayer? Are you committed to praying for one another? We just had that big prayer list to all these people. And I'll show you. you know, I'll say, I can't remember. Go home and say, God, you know everything that was on the prayer list this morning. And the preacher pointed out, I left it up to you today. All those people sick, our president, all this stuff. I just pray to you, God. It's easy. That's simple. It's good to call it out by name and by what it is. Just to bring it over. But God knows when you don't know the Bible teaches that we got an intercessor when we don't know what to say. The Holy Spirit kicks in and prays for us. Yeah, right, just right. go. Just say, some of my best prayers is just say, God help me. I don't know what to do. Amen. Amen. And the next Amen. minute, things just change just like that. And I just say, thank you, God. Yes, Amen. Some of my best prayers, help me, Jesus. That's right. Amen. Committed to prayer. Are you committed to worship? Are you committed to being in God? you can to grow and to support and encourage one another? Are you committed to forgiving one another? If you're going to serve in the church, you've got to forgive one another. We all, you know that message I preach, and I'm getting ready to preach it again, I think, forbearing one another. Every one of us is different. Some of y'all don't like the way I do things. I don't like the way some of y'all do things. It's just like in your home, if you had brothers and sisters, I had one brother, me and him were totally different. I didn't understand it like half the stuff he did. And he probably didn't like what I did. But we got along. He's my brother, you know, in the church. We got to forgive one another. We got to fool about it. If you're going to serve, you can't cook. Okay, the kitchen opens up. Here's an example. We get the food back. Nancy's been back there forever. And Bess jumped in and Denise and others. And we got somebody comes in and say, well, Jerry and Vernon started coming. So he says, you know, I feel like I need to serve. I'm going to come serve in the kitchen. I'm going to help them girls in the kitchen. 
and then somebody tell, I don't like the way Jerry does it. It don't matter how Jerry, you forgive him, pull back, go on, thank God he sent a helper. That's, right. That's, That's right. what you do. Get along with one another. Get along, forbear, love one another, worship one another, forgive one another, encourage one another. Encourage. If you're going to be a servant, you got to encourage. Yeah, I've had so much encouragement as a pastor of this church. I know y'all pray for me and I get calls and texts. I mean, I'll just be, have dumped out on me things in this church. And I'll, even on my, I'll be in my mail right and my phone out. I get a text in the day. Just thinking about you today, pray for you, pray for pray to have a Holy Ghost filled day. And it's just like I all of a sudden it's wow, it's gonna be all right. They pray for me. You know, and then the next thing you know, God, I just start crying out to God, help me figure this out, God. Give me discernment what to do, and all of a sudden it just gets fixed. Encourage. We need to encourage one another because this world will be just down. Committed to studying, praying, worship, encouraging. And first, you gotta do all this. You gotta swallow your pride. You gotta humble yourself. You gotta be born again to be a part of the family. That's the, that's the, it's simple. Confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, and ask God to save you. That's as simple as it can be. Confessing with your mouth that you're lost, you need a savior. That's hard for you. Hard to come to the point where. I need help. I can't do it. We'll do everything we can before we do that. I've heard preachers say, you've tried drugs, you've tried beer, you've tried sex, you've tried everything else. Why don't you try Jesus? I wish I'd have come to him before I tried all that stuff. That's what we need first. <clears throat> do you humble yourself? Realize that you're a sinner. And then after that, total surrender. If you're going to be committed to serve the Lord, to work for the Lord, you've got to sell out. You've got to give him all. He wants to be <coughs> Lord of your family, Lord of your children, Lord of your husband, Lord of your wife, Lord of your home, Lord of your bank account, Lord of your help, pray to him. He wants all of you. He don't, he don't want part of you. I saw a sign one day, a lot, there's a lot of divorce and a lot of uh, people go through uh, having weekend visits all with their children. Thomas and his, well, they do that with their children. I, I've been through that, I know. It's hard. I saw a sign on a church sign one day, God don't want weekend visits, he wants full custody. That's right. That's if you're right. gonna be committed, you gotta give it all to him. Yeah. You gotta be born again, and you gotta surrender your life. You gotta die, give up, give up self, and live for him. That's where the work comes in. That's the cost. That's what preacher Billy Graham. Count the cost. It's easy to come to the cross and say, I want to be saved. And say, I believe. And most people will do it. But you have to believe this whole book. You can't pick out the parts you want to believe and leave the other part out. He wants you to believe in your heart. And it, for righteousness, but he wants you to obey his commands, to love one another, to be in church, to be that person, to repent, to turn. If you don't believe he wants all that, you don't believe. You believe it all, or you don't believe it all. Try if you'll come. If you're here today and you don't know the Lord as your Savior, if you, you don't have to work for that, you just have to believe. You have to humble yourself. You have to confess with your mouth. I'm not worthy of heaven, Lord. I'm a sinner. I'm lost. Without you, I can't make it. I can't make it another step. I can't make it that step into glory. I need you today. And if you're here born again, and you've got weak, if you've stumbled, if you're not doing the things that you once done for God, or if you feel like God's wanting you to do more and you're holding back, you need to just ask God to search your heart. Maybe he's wanting to surrender. Maybe he, maybe, maybe you done like me. I've told my story. 
before I got called to preach, I don't even know why, I just went home on myself, I guess. I went up, I knew I was saved, I told my pastor, I said, I don't even know what, God wanted me to give him all, I'm holding back something. It was a call to preach. I said, I surrender to God, God, I want you to have all, everything that's old for is God's yours. Starting the day, it's all yours. Within two weeks, you call me to preach. There's no telling what God might be wanting us to do if we just surrender it. Give it to him. If you want to work for God, you got to be committed. you got to be sold out. George is going to do an invitation. you got anything on your heart, if you don't know, if you have a doubt, I'll be glad to pray with you. I can hear my Savior study 6 o'clock tonight. Don't forget that. Remember to pray for Sarah. She'll be driving back to Wilmington. That's where we do it. Down to Wilmington today. Pray for her safe travel. And, uh, if you, all those on the prayer list, y'all know all the days. Pray, pray for them. Uh, Russell, you just message in prayer today. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us this opportunity to come back in your house and serve you today. Dear Lord, you know we serve you in our hearts as we go through the week. Let, uh, let all of us, let our light shine for you next week amongst all of the darkness that we face every day. Yeah. Go with us as we leave today. Dear Lord, we love you. In uh, Jesus' holy name.